I want to try and give people a basic understanding of how all the saw chain stuff works. I think a lot of it is misunderstood and really an important part of being able to improve what you're doing or to start breaking some of the, the rules that are involved in this is to understand how it works. Once you understand the ins and outs of what's happening, it's pretty easy to start modifying or manipulating things to get the result you're looking for. So we'll start with some very basic stuff here. I've got a 46 RS cutter that I've broken out of a chain and some offcuts of some stringy bark that I milled to make a floor for a tractor carry all. So we'll use this to try and demonstrate it. So what we're looking at here is a cutter as it's entered the wood. Now it's going to be upside down because this is how the majority of cutting is done with the underside of the bar. So we'll just work through it to give everyone a good understanding of what's actually occurring there. So for those who are unfamiliar with it, parts of our cutter, we have our depth gauge at the front. As we can see, that's in contact with the wood. That limits how far that cutter can rock. So each job is to limit the depth of the cut. If we were to lower this down to that witness mark there, the cutter would be rocked forward and further forward making it want to dig into the wood more. This can provide a benefit in cut speed, but it can also work against you. We have our cutter. We're looking at the outside here. We can see our side plate. Down here in the wood is our leading edge or our working corner. It's in there doing what it does. So each job is to come through and sever the wood fibers. Severing those fibres is the hardest job the chain has to do. So this little corner, our working corner, our leading edge, has the hardest job. We can manipulate things there with different, side, with different amounts of side plate angle. But the thing to look at here, this is a standard cutter as it come off a chain, so it has a 60 degree side plate angle. We can see that the leading edge, or that working corner, as you can see, that leading edge or the working corner is down into the wood and it's ahead of everything else. The other thing to pay attention to while we're here on the side is how little of that side plate is actually engaged with the wood. It's only a very tiny section. Now this is a standard 404 cutter, so it has a 30 thou depth gauge setting. If you're running a standard 25 thou setting on a 3 8 chain, then it would be a smaller amount of it in contact with the wood. But as we can see, it's only a very little bit. This tiny bit at the end. We can also see in action here the top plate clearance angle. So you can see how the cutter is angled back to allow that clearance behind it. So there's a reduction in friction. So that's the basics of it from the outside. We'll have a look at a few other diff a few different angles. So here we have it from more of a side on angle. You can see how things are working. Our leading edge is in there. The angles that we've formed on the inside start to deflect the timber of the wood chip across to the inner edge. You can also see how little of that side plate's engaged from this angle. So the cutter isn't all that wide. The widest point is the outer edge of that corner. So very little of it makes contact with the wood. That's its side plate clearance angle. It is interesting to see how it starts pulling the chip up through the inside there. When we're viewing it from this angle, we can start to see what the top plate cutting angle does on the underside of that top plate. It effectively works as a wood plane. The, the, working, the leading edge, or the outer corner, severs that fibre and starts breaking it away. The top plate cutting angle is responsible for digging into the wood and starting to plane that chip out. So that's what it's starting to do. What we should see, if we could see this in action, would be this chip starting to form and flow back through here. That section back there is called the, the chip channel. The chips flow between the underside of the top plate and what would be 
the upper part of the drive link through here if this chain was assembled. So it gives you a bit of an idea of what's happening from there. So here it is again after I've just driven it into a fresh bit of wood. You can see all that chip starting to form there as the top plate stays, as the top plate starts planing it out. So that's what it looks like. So then we move on to the next part of this. The next part of the cutter cycle is it needs to be pulled out of the wood. So what gets it out of the wood is chain tension. The chain tension is created by the, both the static tension that you put into the chain when you've tightened it. Uh, it's also created by the momentum of the chain being turned by the engine. But most importantly, when it comes to this, the chain tension that's created to pull this cutter out of the wood is done by the next cutter entering the wood. As the following one behind this enters the wood, it creates tension as it's being forced down into it. And that will eventually snap the cutter back into its position. So there's a couple of competing theories on how these cut. So I go with Carlton's idea. So the, the cutter comes down, enters the wood, it obviously rocks back and then gets into this position that it's in now. I believe it is pulled away from the bar. You can see this to a degree. I've tried capturing this slow motion a few times, but it's really hard with all the stuff moving around. But you can see an air gap forming between the base of the cutters and the bar as you're cutting through wood. So it stands to reason the force of the top plate trying to drive the cutter down into the wood will pull the cutter away from the bar and that chain tension pulls the whole thing back up. So now we've got some of the basics of how this works, we can get into some more details and some different ideas on sharpening. The most common one that's used now is increasing the amount of side plate angle or the hook as people like to call it. Hook used to be a term for incorrect sharpening. Now it's used to describe side plate angle. It's just changing times. So a lot of people will lower the file down, increase that side plate angle to try and increase cutting speed. This may work in some conditions, but it's not something that really works for me with the timbers that I'm cutting. This one's set at its factory angle of about 60 degrees. I'll try and get right in on this. You can see with that 60 degree angle that the very leading edge of our chain here, the corner, is in the wood quite a distance before it's actually being severed off and broken. You can see the tip of this pointer is essentially where it's being broken off and down here is the very point. So that is where some of my ideas regarding reducing side plate angle come from. Because in my experience, bringing that more into line with where it starts to peel off in the hardwoods that I cut is generally a more efficient shape. Now, what I'll do is I will file this into a, a different shape and we'll try and drive it back into the wood. So hopefully we have something to compare it with. Okay, we're back with this cutter, but with a different shape. I have now square filed it to approximately an 85 degree side plate. So as we can see here, I've reduced that side plate angle. Because of that, it is now trying to break the chip out a lot sooner. Rather than having that leading edge buried deeper into the wood, it's now breaking it off as it hits. So I'll try and zoom right in on that and show it. You can see that when the leading edge is hitting the wood, the entirety of that side plate is severing those fibers almost instantly. So instead of building up the little section in front of it and starting to try and lift, peel it up and out, it's doing it in one motion. Now, if you've ever used a square fold chain, 
one of the th main things you'll notice, or one of the main things you notice is how smooth they cut. Part of the reason they feel very smooth when they cut is they're reducing a lot of the reaction force. The way they're reducing the reaction force by doing a more efficient job at this. Because there's less of that side plate buried in that wood, it creates less push back or pull forward force to the operator. It also is generally a more efficient shape. Now it's not widely done because it is very difficult to use and I'm not telling you to go and learn how to do this because it was a struggle to learn. Just showing what can change. One of the most common pieces of information of square chain is that it dulls quick. Uh, it's delicate compared to round. That information is extremely common knowledge but it's generally common amongst people that have not a lot of experience with square. Um, Anyone who does run it will tell you that the corner is quite well supported and it holds up surprisingly well. Like much better than you would expect a regular round filed full chisel chain to do. So what we can see here is our corner and our side plate are working together to sever those wood fibres in one, in one motion. With a round filed chain, the point is sticking in under the timber. It is going forwards before it's actually breaking what's above it. That's where this has an advantage in edge strength. With the round chain, with that corner being pointed out further leading the edge there, it's under a lot more force. As it's trying to pull those chips out, it's trying to distort that tip. You know, every time it's taking a bite, it's getting that little up and down motion in it as it's going forward and trying to pull that chip. It's the same as if you were to get a screwdriver and use it for leverage. You stick it under something and try and pry it up and down. You eventually, eventually start bending the tip. This is a much blunter edge and it's not experiencing that same load. Part of the reason why if you ever do experience square file chain, you can get it to hold an edge for such a long time because it's not, the corner is not taking that same load of having that leverage motion on it. I'll throw this in just because it's another shot of it pulling chips. It's now square filed and it has more top plate cutting angle. It's approximately 50 degrees. It becomes much more efficient at clearing them chips. So that pretty much wraps it up for this little bit. This is just the very basics of how shit works, essentially. I just wanted to show it in action. It can sound very complex, all this sharpening stuff, but at the end of the day, it's pretty basic. We're only dealing with three angles. There is a limit to how much we can move and what we can change and how things work. But hopefully, if you just see it sticking into some wood, you can grab that basic understanding of how it works. From there, you can build your information on how you might be able to change or modify things to work better for you.